Howdy, I'm Matt, and in this video, we're gonna be calibrating our current sensor within iNav. Now, this post is specifically for Jason, and I'll explain why. So, you'll see the post which I made earlier on this morning, which was that for my ZO HD drift, I managed to cover 62 minutes worth of flight time, uh, and a fair amount of distance, and I knew how much I put back in to the uh, battery. So the, in other words, my calibration of the current sensor uh, is very accurate. It's within 70 milliamp fears over 2,200 milliamp fears. Now, how did I do that? And how did I know to set it to 340? Now, the thing is, uh, and by the way, this is Jason's question down here as well. So I'm just explaining it for Jason and I sincerely hope that it helps you too. So let me just explain the scenario is that I already knew that my current sensor, which I'll show you in a moment, was set for the Matec F411 WSE. Now it does vary from one board to another, and it doesn't matter what this number is. I'll show you where to find that in a moment. Okay, but I knew that's what that number was. Uh, and the milliamp field which I used in flight, so this was the previous flight, was 1400 milliamp field. So that's what it read on when I disarmed the board, or that was the last batch of current total summary, which I saw on the on-screen display. Then I charged the battery back up. Now it doesn't matter if it's a Lion or a LiPo battery, it's completely irrelevant. You just charge it back up to full charge. And my battery charger actually put 1806 back in there. Now if I press enter, uh, that gives me a new value of 328. Now where do you take this number and where do you find that other number? Well. If your flight controller has, and assuming it has, a current sensor in it, so the Matec F411 WSE does, you will see that, uh, and so on the configuration tab, on the right hand side for the current sensor, so that's the value which I had set to 423 by default, that's what it's set to, but it was wrong, and uh, so that's the value which I then went in and you would normally go and set that to whatever number the site gives you here It'll get you very very close. So uh, it gave me 328 now I've got to be honest. I felt that that was if I get that back on my screen I felt that was perhaps a little bit low uh, So I set it to 340 and then I just clicked save and reboot now that's the really nice and simple thing for you to do and this is what I would personally suggest to you to use. There are other methods to calibrate the current sensor. Uh, you could use a power meter, you could uh, use a collection of other methods to work out what the current is. However, this one's really easy because Look, you, you just take either your laptop or you take your phone and maybe use the speedy B and the and a, and a OTG cable uh, to the flight line. You go and fly your model and then just come back and I will put a link to this website for you in the video description and you literally just put your numbers in there. So if your number, which it said, so let's pretend uh, within 9 av that value there was 599 for example so you type in 599 in here maybe you only use 690 milliamp fuse according to the on-screen display within iNav however when you went to charge the battery you actually put in I don't know 1202 milliamp fuse press enter and then there that's the number which you need to put, then put in to your uh, iNav configuration. So you change that to whatever that was, 344. 344, hit save and reboot, and that will get you really, really close, Jason. So Jason, I sincerely hope this video has been a help to you. And if your name's not Jason, and you've been watching this and wondered how you can get your uh, uh, current sensor calibrated, that's the way to do it. This will get you very, very close to it. Uh, and again, I was personally, if I go back to that post in the uh, iNav Fixed Wing Group, I was personally really, really happy that I managed to get within 70 milliamp fuzz, over 2,200 milliamp fuzz used uh, within the model. And my, my personal setting for that flight controller in my model was 340. I'm super happy with that. But do remember, you can repeat the, uh, repeat this process. You can do it. You can do it for your first flight. Go and fly round for 20 minutes or 62 minutes if it's a drift, uh, and then come back. Remember the settings, swap them over, and then just tweak them over time. The thing is, is that I've got to be honest with you. I'm really happy with my setting. It's close enough. I'm not going to do this anymore. However, just be fully aware. I own two Maytech F411 boards. One in the drift. One 
in the Dart 250G and the settings for each of these are actually turning out to be very, very different just because of this process. So with that said, I will put a link to this website in the video description for you. Literally just type your numbers in there, go to the last one, hit enter, and then it will give you a number and it will get you really, really close. So Jason, I sincerely hope that helps you. And if you're not James or Jason, then I hope that also helps you as well. So with that said for myself, Matt, a big thank you to you for taking the time to join me here for this quick episode on how to set the current sensor with an iNav. And this is, this is just such a simple, safe, foolproof method uh, of just working over a couple of flights, working out what your current sensor value needs to be. So with that said, if you enjoyed this episode, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up. If you've got any questions or comments, don't forget you, you can ask them in the comments section underneath this video. And of course, if this video has been and helps you and you like RC in general and think I might be able to help you, go and nip and have a look on the rest of the YouTube channel and subscribe if you see fit. So with that said, from myself, Matt, with a very croaky voice, I do apologize. I'll catch you again shortly. Cheerios!